good just to know that the rest of the year we can, you know, work on, on the details and, and get prepared for, for October, November. It's always fun when you're winning games, obviously. You start 7-0. Uh, what's it like playing for Tommy Wielding Jr., Mason? It's, it's good. He's really good. Tommy, you know, as, as you've probably seen on, in his interviews and stuff, he, he, he's, uh, he's very direct. He's a great motivator. And he knows the game. And I think uh, it has to be said, it's not just Tommy, you know, I think it's the whole staff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think part of being a good, a, a good leader, a good manager is assembling people uh, next to you who, who can, who can do, do other things and take responsibility. And we have Martin Nash, we have a full sports science team that yeah. they all complement each other well. So credit to Tommy in assembling that staff. And it's, it's, been, a, it's been a fun, fun year to work under these guys. Anything you've noticed compared to some of the other coaches you've had, Julian? Um, they try to work on the details a lot, yeah. uh, where I saw it sometimes where other coaches in Germany or even in MLS, they try to keep the rhythm every week and uh, you don't go too crazy in, in each direction if it's details or whatever it is, where we are here very focused on every single thing and trying to be a perfectionist almost. What about the dress code? He's always a sharp <laughs> dressed manager. Is that something he tries to implement with the team? Just by example, right? Yeah. Yeah, he does. I mean, we try to show up to the home games at least, you know, dressed to impress, I think is the line he likes to use. And, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's like any, I think that almost translates to other parts of life too, right? You always dress for the job you want. It's like, you want to look, you want to look serious. You want to, you want to come in, it's business. And, uh, you know, he, you know, he looks sharp on the sideline. So reflect yeah. well in our club. Yeah. Always looking very serious. Uh, you guys have had some, uh, some fun moments, especially uh, when you're scoring goals. Nick Ledgerwood has an interesting goal celebration uh, where he uh, appears to pull his pants down and uh, <laughs> give a little shake. What's that all about? I, to be honest, I wasn't there when that came out. That was, I think in the, the first time we saw that was in Forge away. And I still had my hamstring problem. So I remember, I remember thinking the same thing, like, what's going on here? I thought he was, I the, I thought he was the car, you know, those, yeah. those things outside yeah. of the car dealership. Sergio was really into it. He knew what's going yeah, on right yeah. away. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how they have that. It might be an inside joke between the yeah. Sergio Camargo Come and on. Ledger. You guys don't know. Julian doesn't I know. I swear, I actually... I, I'm not... You know, by yourself, I don't know if I'm by it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about some of the other players on the team? Uh, Nico Pasquati has been an interesting player. Uh, did you expect to, this sort of production from him? Did you know much about him before the season started? I had uh, not really. I didn't have him on the map, and he has been all proving everybody wrong. Hmm. Um, a different kind of player, but very interesting and very, very helpful for us. Yeah, I mean, he's one of those guys that I think the fans love and, and just what this league is all about, right? He just wears his heart on his sleeve, pure passion, intensity. I don't think he, he has the word quit, you know, yeah. in, 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 his, in his vocabulary. So a lot of fun to watch and just anybody with that kind of pace and power, you know, you definitely don't want to be a left back going up against him week in, week out. Yeah, we get a glimpse of what he does on the field. What about him off the, off the pitch? What's he like? A uh, very honest and uh, stick to his guts kind of guy. Like he, what he says is usually what he follows through. Um, you can believe him in, and a uh, very fun guy to have around for sure. Hmm. Yeah, he, he fits really well, I think, in with our with our team culture. You know, we have a we have a really that's one of our strong points at this club. Everybody kind of gets along, and everybody has a part to play. And he's definitely like 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 Jules said, he's honest guy. You know. From Alberta, I just he's just a solid, solid guy for sure. Yeah, Julian, have you ever played with a player like him? And at what point did you think that you know, this guy could be an impact player? Um, once he started running at people the whole time, he doesn't stop, right? He just <laughs> I thought you were going to say once he started throwing it in. <laughs> <laughs> once he started throwing it in. Uh, I mean, uh, there is a certain time against Valor. You remember when Tommy said he made a difference with his throwing? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, made yeah. a difference with the throwing because he throw it down long, then we get a free kick out of it and we score. So his throwing has a massive impact for our game, right? But um, no, and he starts he, he starts bullying people. He's one of those players. He just keeps running at you till you're like, okay, I can't deal with him anymore, right? Mm -hmm. It just it's I would be super annoyed, and especially with his physicality, he's a, he's a beast athletically. So yeah. it's just one of those. Fuck, leave yeah. me alone right now, you know? Yeah, it's fun hearing about <laughs> yeah. the players. Uh, Who's the funniest player on the on the squad? Intentionally or <laughs> <laughs> both? Yeah, 
Malonga is the one definitely the funniest. <laughs> I don't know if it's intention, not intentionally sometimes, yeah. but um, we have the most joy out of him with his French accent and just being his whole himself. Yeah, yeah he's a very unique guy, and it's true he does. He's funny. The trans, you know, he, the translation sometimes, which isn't always funny to laugh at somebody because they don't speak perfect English, but. He takes it in stride and, and he plays on... things in your own language, they yeah. don't really translate into English. And it was the same for me when I came over in yeah. the beginning. Just use terms yeah. no one understands, but you think it's the right way, right? Yeah, you've played with uh, some great players. Uh, the most polarizing player in the game, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, uh, when you were with the LA Galaxy. What's he like? Um, massive ego, but uh, I guess he follows through every single time he says something, so it gives him the right to speak and right to talk. Um, very cool guy to small kind of guys, I guess, they're down to earth. He's very cool to them if you give him his space and his respect. Mm -hmm. um, he just leaves you alone basically mm -hmm. he never knew my name I think he only knew I'm the German right. I guess that's how he called me but um, no it's incredible to have him around he was super professional most of the time the earliest guy in there doing his thing and um, leaving the latest and just great to learn a little bit from him is there anyone who comes close to matching his personality in the league in the league um, or on cavalry and on Calvary, it probably will be Malonga as well, yeah. um, just because he's unique. In the league, I guess you could say the easiest would be to say Marcus Haber, mm. but um, I don't know his personality, uh, I don't know his ego, so I don't mm. want to judge there. Uh, speaking of Malonga, though, he's an interesting player. Tell us about uh, uh, his impact on the game, uh, uh, Mason, and, uh, and what he's like off the pitch as well. Yeah, well, he definitely gives us a target up top. He's yeah. a big body, uh, and he's really he's an experienced player. You can tell you can tell he's you know played a lot of games at a lot of high, at a high level because he just seems to know the movements. And one of those guys that for players playing behind him like Jules and I, you know, you just kind of feel what he's gonna do, and there's sort of that unspoken like chemistry of like, mm -hmm. okay, he's probably gonna make this run, and he does. Um, he's got this confidence too. We've heard him uh, post match. Talking about how he's, uh, he's a good yeah, player. Yeah, that's so, what you want, right? Yeah, you want, you want sure. your number nine or, or, or your, your, your quote-unquote big players to have a bit of something about them. And I think that's like what Jules probably said. is like too, Zlatan right? was like that, like give me the ball, yeah. you know, or I'm the best, you know, like this is, a, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't, you don't want a shy, a shy number nine or number 10 that doesn't, you know, want to be front and center. These he's guys your, are He's your front guy, right? You're following right. through. So if he, yeah. he says like, I'm the best player in the league, you want to be the best team in the league, right? So you're kind of like following that yeah. along a little bit as well. Yeah. Um, what about uh, through at the back, Mason? Uh, who's the vocal leader with that back line? Um, I, I think Jay Wielden, you know, he speaks a lot. You know, being a, he, he's he's kind of comes from that culture, of, you know, that English. Like they they love chatting and uh, getting everybody going. I, I speak, you know, I wouldn't say I'm like the like the most vocal guy, but when something needs to be said or on the field, you know, you try to make the adjustment when yeah. it's there. Uh, Marco and Marco and Nico, whoever's playing, they're vocal too. Our, our team is more of like. It's not one of these teams that just starts yelling and shouting just for the yeah. sake of it because you think that's what the coach wants. It's like if you're in a rhythm, you maybe don't need to talk, but if something needs to be adjusted or you need to tell somebody left, right, there's a man coming, then you say something. So it's, you know, useful information, I'd say, with this team. Yeah, how important has that chemistry been for the back line in particular? Yeah, big time. I think, again, this team was built already on chemistry mm -hmm. from from the squad that sort of came through the, the PDL championship team. And... Uh, then we've added guys like Jules and I, and, and again, it's just sort of gelling. We, we, we gelled quick, and that, that, I think that plays a huge part in the early success that we had. Mm -hmm. um, and there's different levels, right? There's guys with more experience, less experience, but everybody's kind of coming along, riding the wave yeah. together wherever you fit. You know, I think there's been growth in both as a team and a lot of players individually this year as well. All right. Well, we'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll talk about the Canadian Championship run. I'm with Julian Boucher and Mason Trafford. Stay with us on One Soccer. Yeah, obviously it wasn't, wasn't the nicest scenes after that game. I think it was a lot of things going on, some, you know, some stuff between the coaches, some stuff between the players. When they tell you that you have to be careful with the spice in Mexico, they meant for games like this. Today, Liga MX, Club America. 
Puebla on one soccer. Welcome back. I'm joined by Julian Boucher and Mason Trafford of Cavalry FC. In the league, we have our derbies. So you guys have uh, your derby with uh, FC Edmonton, but it's become clear that the real rivalry in this league is between Cavalry and Forge FC. That first Canadian championship match, the first leg, ended with a bit of a brouhaha. Uh, walk us through what happened in that match, Mason. Yeah, obviously it wasn't, wasn't the nicest scenes after that game. I think it was a lot of things going on, some, you know, some stuff between the coaches, some stuff between the players. And uh, I, I think it just when, when there's two teams going after a big prize like that, there's going to be emotions. And I think some stuff maybe maybe boiled over um, after that match. But, you know, two of the teams that are really fighting for fighting for trophies in this league, for sure. And again, we ever both both teams want to win and they want to win bad. How much do you hate Forge FC, Julian? Uh, I actually really like competing against them yeah. because it's always a, a heated game. They're super into it. And I, I said it to Nick yesterday. Um, love competing against Becker because he's uh, crazy on the field. He's really into it. But after he has good sport, sportsmanship. So um, I enjoy competing against them. Decent team. Um, fun. No, no hate. <laughs> Just enjoying the competition, I guess, for me. Yeah. Do you get up for those games a little bit more, Mason? No, no, I don't think so. I think, again, there's, there's seven teams in our league right now, and if, if you're getting up or down for certain, for certain games, they're all worth three points, you know? Right. So it's maybe not the most wise choice if you're getting up for more for that game. It, I think it's just, again, we know we respect them uh, yeah. and what they can do, and it's just about you know, putting our, our best self against them and, and hopefully you know, coming out on top. And staying with the uh, Canadian Championship then, uh, what did it mean to be to the Vancouver Whitecaps in those two legs and, and become the first CPL team to reach a semifinal? Yeah, it was really important to us because, you know, everybody always talks about, you know, the levels of, the, uh, of soccer in this country or in North America in general. MLS is better than us, and, but we hadn't even played a game yet against them. Right. And I think it was important, you know, for the league to have, to have a team do well and, and show, okay, you know, there's a league here in Canada now that can compete, and then just from us personally, you know, you like like, like Jules said about going against Forge, you want to you want to compete against the best players, and uh, you know, it feels good to go out there and think, okay, you know, we're not far off, and in that case, we we beat them. Yeah, yeah, we put Calgary on the map again, right? And especially we're on the west west coast where everybody in Calgary just knows almost the Whitecaps if it comes to soccer. So then, if you beat the Whitecaps, you're like the ones over there right now because everybody knows the white caps so it's fun and brings us back on the map was there a moment in that tie where you thought hey we got this was it maybe jordan brown's goal yeah it felt good the whole you know the whole game i think you know you never want to think that right because you just had it you got to go through 90 minutes and then you have another 90 minutes but i think before the game starts you maybe you know especially the the younger players who've never maybe played an mls game before or against an MLS team before, you, you think maybe they're bigger than they are, or like it's gonna be something different, but in the end, you were like, well, these guys, they're just soccer players like us. And after the first game, we, I think we realized, hey, these guys are beatable. You know, it was 0-0 zero, zero at Spruce, and we thought, let's go now to BC Place. There's not a ton of pressure on us. Nobody expects us to win. It's gonna be a cool atmosphere with some fans on a, on a good pitch. We can move the ball around. And I think there was always just a bit of quiet confidence, like, Hey, these guys are human. That's not. We're not playing Barcelona with Leo Messi up front. We're, we we have a chance here, and we just worked ourselves through that game. Uh, any of the Whitecaps players say anything interesting to you during or after the game? Uh, not really. I think um, when they scored their goal, they were celebrating so much that it really meant a lot to them to score against us, and it showed us kind of our respect. And they were like, "Oh, they like that means a lot to them to play us, right, and to score." And when Zed scored the goal, just with the previous question, um, that kind of we knew we got this now because mm -hmm. we scored at the perfect timing off a corner where they just came and had their pressure waves off the wave. And then uh, you scored that moment. It's kind of like you killed their rhythm completely and it was over at that point pretty much. Yeah. No, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Rather they get they two goals to two get back goals, into it. Yeah. And we were mm -hmm. solid on that day. Um, it's tough to break us down in January, so I don't think two goals at 
And there wasn't a lot said from them, right? You could yeah. see in their eyes and in their coaches' eyes that, you know, they just lost not only in this tournament but also to a CPL team. It obviously is a bit bit tough for the Whitecaps at the moment. I don't think anybody was too much wanting to do high fives and chats after that game, that's for sure. Where does that win rank in your career? It meant a lot. It meant a lot because, you know, again, it, we all feel quite invested with this with this club, the Cavalry, yeah. um, and just – it's been kind of like a, a great uh, ride in such a short time here that that was like kind of a capstone of what we, all the work we've done this year. So it's up there. It's up yeah. there for sure. What was the most challenging part of the next round uh, facing Montreal Impact? Um, I mean, at least we, we believe that we can win against MLS teams. Yeah. We believe that we are at least closer maybe to the level than we thought we were before that. Um, it's just very difficult with the schedule we have, right? You play Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, then there's a Tuesday game and Friday right. night game. So the turnarounds are so quickly that you have to don't have much time to prepare and uh, it just doesn't make it easier, I guess. Mm -hmm. And for you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're going into this, you know, to these massive games with like some Montreal who have some big, big players with very little preparation and, turn, you know, it's mostly all stuff done on the video board and, and tactical talks very little training right um you know and then we, we like jewel said though the belief was really high you know we had done our scouting reports on montreal and again we weren't like these guys are unbeatable it's they're gonna you know it wasn't like an lafc where you watch them and you're like oh man this is gonna be tough we thought we have a real chance we went into that game in montreal and i think they they dominated definitely the possession quite a bit and they had some big chances but even after that game we walked away what was it it was 2-1 right and we were like you know, if one or two things went yeah. differently, we could have maybe snuck out of there with 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. And then we were going back to Spruce, and we know it's tough for people to play there. It's altitude, you know, depending on the pitch conditions and all that stuff. And then that game, I think we were, you'd have to say, they probably walked out of there thinking, oh, we, we, we got away with one here. We were quite quite good in that game, and I think dominated a lot of the a lot of the play. So yeah, just didn't go our way that time, which it had been for a lot of the earlier part of the season. That was a great run. Uh, when you look at the CONCACAF League, Forge making their run in there, do you feel like you should be in that tournament as well? I'm still confused about what, what happened and what didn't happen and what's going on with the Champions League and what's not, to be honest. People, I, people ask me about that and I try to explain it and everybody just looks at me like, I don't get it. What are you talking about? Like, why aren't you in that? I don't know. I'm happy that Forge is doing well, just yeah. like I'm sure they were happy that we did well in that in, in uh, Canada Cup because it looks great on our league. But for sure, I, 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 we have to be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other, it doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. No, we are happy that they're doing well because again, it's good for the league. But I think we should be there, and uh, hopefully we will be there soon. So. Yeah. Is that the next goal for Cavalry then? Keep winning. Yeah. You can't. You can't really. You know, we've got to focus on just happen, the process, winning, right? right? Like, we just yeah. keep winning yeah. games, and whoever's deciding yeah. if we're going to play in the Champions League or not, I guess might, you know, hopefully there's no more curveballs thrown about yes. who's going to get that berth. But, yeah. you know, if we win, that's all that, I don't, you know, Jules and I can control is going on in the field and try to win games. And for sure, it'd be nice, though, for to have some to have some international soccer in Calgary. I think the fans would love that. Yeah, you mentioned winning games, and just wanting to continue to win games. Uh, how challenging is it to get up for games after you win the spring season and you know that you're in the championship game now? I don't think it's challenging because every time you step on the field, it's, it's you having the, cra the, tre the, on the crest on your chest, right? That's mm -hmm. how you say it. Um, you, it's a personal thing as well. You don't want to lose, right? You never want to lose you all, all to your teammates, to your coach, to your whoever. So you want to win. Um, but it definitely gives us time for preparation as well. Taking all the positives from everything we've done in the spring and now the fall and just putting that all into the, to one ingredient, like, you know, one thing so that yeah. come the final, you know, cavalry is going to be very tough to beat. And it, yeah. that's all we can really hope it's for. It's right? job to get done. Yeah. All right, we'll take uh, another short break. When we come back, we'll have more with uh, Mason Trafford and Julian Boucher. Even Definitely the analysis good. from the uh, from the panel and the post game show. Everyone's okay with everything that's been said. Uh, where's Kurt? Yeah. We're <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, welcome back. I'm here with Julian Boucher and Mason Trafford. Julian, you coach a youth club team. Tell us about that experience and uh, how you got into this. Um, one of our guys in the club helped me getting this sorted out and I coached in DC before, Washington yeah. and LA a little bit as well. Just enjoying working from a different perspective in the game, I guess, uh, helps me to get away sometimes from our stuff in soccer, see soccer from a different perspective, and maybe helps me here and there with my own game as well, making yeah. different decisions, especially as a coach. If I think about when I train as a player, mm -hmm. I sometimes feel like I'm, I make it difficult for a coach in practice, and then the opposite around, when you're the coach, you're like, what are your kids doing right now? Just listen. <laughs> What's it been like, I guess, in the community? So that's a community initiative that, uh, that, yeah, you've taken on. Is there anything you're doing in the community and what's it been like with the fan base in Calgary? Yeah, the it feels like the city's like really embracing it. I think the the Canada Cup run helped because yeah. it definitely like it garners a lot of media attention, which then people see and then you hear everybody's talking about, oh, the MLS, the MLS teams are coming mm -hmm. to town. So, you know, I think it's been a slow, a slow upward trend of, you know, more fans every game, more awareness in the city. It's pretty rare now that if you tell somebody or if they ask you what you do, you know, I play for the Calvary, almost everybody knows at least what that is, which is a good sign. I've been in cities that that doesn't happen. Um, and it's tough, honestly. I know Jules is coaching, but there's not, it's, the schedule is very busy, yeah. like in terms of like, you know, we, we do our community appearances and stuff, but it's not a ton right now because we're, we're either on the road or it's like game recovery, prep, another game. So, you know, that stuff happens in the off season and I'm sure we'll get back to quite a bit of it as soon as we wrap up in uh, November. Yeah, how would you assess the first season, the first year of the Canadian Premier League? I think it's uh, it's been a huge success, right? I, I think... Um, the product on the field has been, you know, exceeded my expectations mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, everything, even like the studio we're in now and, and the coverage, it, it's been, I think it's been very professional for a first year league and, uh, and everything, the, the, the league take, the, the teams, you know, at least our team, we get taken care of, you know, we're, we're traveling well, we're not taking buses 15 hours to games, you know, mm -hmm. we fly, we stay in hotels, it, it's good and, you know. Do you Definitely have any analysis from the uh, from the panel and the post game show. Everyone's okay with everything that's been said. Uh, where's Kurt? Yeah, we're, we're, we're <laughs> he's not here today. Where's, where's Kurt? I just got my tooth replaced last week. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Is that uh, in regards to uh, a challenge that you yeah, took yeah, on that Kurt it was thought was a clean? Challenge in Pacific, but could, could Are Kurt and Terry clean? allowed in here unsupervised <laughs> together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I good. wasn't happy about that one, and I felt that a long time. But oh, you guys need to hug and make up now. now. I got it fixed last week, yeah. and I was happy about it. No, good stuff. Uh, what's uh, stood out uh, as far as uh, the opposition and the teams you've played? Uh, is there anyone that's really impressed you, Julian? Uh, I'm in this league or from our team? In this league, from, uh, from the other teams in the league? Um, there are definitely some, some very interesting players in here. In this league, I like, I like Tuffo a lot. Um, mm. ev even though they might not right now be out of the title race or whatever, but I like him a lot as a player. Um, he can grow as well, and, but maybe has a big future. Uh, certainly some interesting players in every team almost. We're like... Uh, they have an edge and I feel like this league also has given a lot of opportunities to players who maybe have not made it yet uh, or they're 23 and kind of like fall under the radar but now got a second win so there are many guys to have something to prove yeah. I guess for myself as well kind of the situation um, so it's glad or well, I'm glad that we got the chance and there's probably a lot of other guys as well and yeah it's a professional league it shows us the coverage is great um, obviously, it's a new league, so there's some things to improve, regulations or whatsoever, but uh, uh, overall, I, I think the league has like, gone over all the expectations yeah. we had before. Yeah, I mean, to talk about the opportunity. You grew up in North Vancouver. This league wasn't around. What does it mean for, for young players uh, like Arabin Peppel with Cavalry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I can't even imagine if I was, you know, back when I was Arabim's age, having having this to sort of think, oh, I could play for my hometown team, which is a, a full professional team in Canada. It's pretty unbelievable. It's exactly what this country needs for sure. Uh, again, I, I always say there's no reason, like there's nothing different from like a like a Brazilian or Argentinian from a Canadian in terms of like our makeup. It's just 
why aren't why why can't we be as good as them? And hopefully this is the first the first step on a road to eventually being able to compete with these you know massive massive soccer countries. So for the for the young guys and and again you can see it on our team we kind of have a pretty layered team from guys like myself who are coming back to kind of wind down their careers and sort of mm -hmm. hopefully give a, give something to the to the young guys like the Arabs coming through. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing I think to be able to do yeah. that and. Uh, to hopefully again, I always say, let, imagine you know, imagine people in Cal Calgary, our city, for example, tuning into the 2026 World Cup and like seeing an Arab and potentially play on the biggest stage. You know, that, that's it's going to be crazy if you can put your wrap your mind around that. It's it's quite a quite a cool concept. All right, so now if you could be commissioner for a day, what's something you would change in the league, Julian? Uh, I would try to spread out the schedule a little yeah. bit for us. Um, make just for you guys, not the rest of the league? Just I don't know, for everybody. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. especially for us, if we make the CONCACAF next year, yeah. then uh, we would need it. Um, it would probably help a little bit, just because now in September we have four games, then we have a month with seven games. Um, but apart from that, uh, we're generally very happy. Um, mm -hmm. I would. We talked about it earlier. If a team wins the spring and the fall season, they should uh, definitely get an advantage in some way. If, if they win both, the, yeah, the spring and the fall. They exactly, have, yeah. in some way. Uh, at, the, at the finals, when there's a playoff game, I guess, for winning the league, there should be a certain advantage. Mm -hmm. But um, that's just uh, ideas they come from <laughs> us. Yeah, and for you, Mason? I've been thinking the whole time when Jules was talking. <laughs> right. um, I, okay, so something different than Jules. I would say, uh, I would probably say something like pitch standards. I, okay. I talk about this a lot, especially after we've just played the MLS games in the Canada Cup. It's different. It's different. I think for the sport to really grow and to, if you want to respect the people paying the money to come in to watch the games, you have to be able to put on a, a good product. And, That's a good point. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you could have Barcelona playing on like a crap field and, they're never going to get to the level that we're used to watching when we watch them play in the in La Liga. So, you know, obviously it's a new league. You got to grow with the league, but you need to have a certain level of, of pitch if you want to be able to put on a top level product. And I think there's some some areas where we could improve on that for sure. Well, it's been enjoyable to watch you guys uh, all year long. Thank you so much for coming on with us today. Thank you. Thank very you much. guys. Yeah, appreciate it. Seems like only yesterday we were sitting here, what, six months ago, is wondering who was going to claim the first ever inaugural season, who was going to be good, who was going to be bad, who was going to lead the scoring. But uh, now we do have a table. We have the fall table. It is complete. We're going to take a look at it right here before we get into uh, kind of looking at each team and what each team might need going into 2020. Yes, including Calvary and Forge, who do meet in the CPL finals on Saturday. But let's start with Halifax. We're going to start from the bottom, seventh place down there all by themselves. I don't think anyone's too surprised to see Halifax at the bottom uh, of the fall standings. Um, but, you know, Halifax, three, seven and eight, 17 points uh, in and around the sixth and fifth and fourth place teams, of course. But um, let's just let's just open it up to, to you guys here and, and, and just say, where do Halifax go from here? Um, Halifax, even though they're last in the table, I feel like they're maybe closer than some other teams are to being, you know, pretty good. Maybe not to the level of Cavalry and Forge, but I, I think with a couple of key additions, this team has kind of a foundation that 